last night in the bottom of the ninth tie ball game, Adam Jones stepped to the plate, down to his last strike, and he delivered. The O's won it in walk-off fashion. For Adam Jones and the rest of the Orioles, that 27th out never happened. on Masson and the O's try and make it two in a row over the Kansas City Royals as we get set for baseball tonight here at Camden Yards. The Orioles also trying to win their fourth consecutive ball game. For the Orioles, if they can get that fourth consecutive win, it will equal the high in a win streak for this 11th season. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Thorne. The Orioles getting the victory last night in dramatic fashion. The Orioles coming away with the well, it's just a great come from behind win in the bottom half of the ninth inning. First time they've won a ball game when they trailed after eight. It is their third walk-off win of the year, but it's the first one where the walk-off was a home run. Walk-off homers just don't happen very often. Matt Wieters got one against Tampa Bay. That was in September of 09. Brian Roberts got one last year. That came against the Chicago White Sox in August. And then, of course, last night, Adam Jones. The Orioles have had nine walk-off home runs over the last six years, and these are the Oriole players who have delivered them. That's why they are so exciting because they just don't come this way very often and sports fans love that kind of stuff. And it was a dramatic one last night, Mike. It certainly was an 0-2 pitch. Very dramatic ninth inning. You know, it picks the ball club up usually for the next day. You saw the saw on that graphic going back. There was three in 0-9. So they don't happen that often. Three in one year is a, is a, is a very high number. So we'll see if they can add to it uh, maybe the next couple of nights and see one again. Orioles uh, also a chance to win a series if they can get the victory here tonight. The Kansas City Royals are uh, suffering through a loss tonight. Paul Splitoff, one of their all-time great pitchers, passed away this morning. You see the numbers that he put up. 120 games in 73 is in the Royals Hall of Fame and inductee in 1987. He was uh, one of the most beloved of the Kansas City Royals. And when you talk about the face of a ball club, Paul Splitter was that kind of a Royal. 24 years also in the broadcast booth. And we send along our condolences to his family. Yeah, absolutely. He did it everything from, you know, worked his way up through the Royal system. And then his after baseball career, working his way up through broadcasting to a longtime Bross Hagen career. 40 years. You know, in the business. Let's go to the PA and out to Dave McGowan. Ladies and gentlemen, we ask that you please rise and that gentlemen remove your hats. Earlier today, the Kansas City Royals lost a beloved member of their family. Paul Splitorf was a Kansas City Royal for 40 years, pitching for the club for his entire 15-year Major League career, and then moving to the Royals' broadcast booth where he spent the last 24 seasons. He was the winningest pitcher in club history, the team's first 20-game winner, and a member of the Royals' Hall of Fame. In honor of his contributions to the game of baseball and to the Kansas City Royals, we ask that you join us in a moment of silence.
Orioles baseball on Masson is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. For the moment, at least, it is an absolutely gorgeous evening here at Camden Yards. Let's take a look at our train. Game time temperature, 83 degrees. Winds out of the southeast. Humidity at 47%. A few high clouds. There's still a lot of sunshine left. And you can visit train.com to find an independent train comfort specialist dealer near you. It's hard to stop a train. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for the Kansas City Royals, brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Gordon Cabrera and Hosmer, friend Core, Butler and Betterman. Trainer gets an Escobar. Fran Cor continuing to put up numbers right now. Let's take a look at our scouting report on Jake Arietta. It's about a six pack. Has allowed home runs in his last six starts, one in each. So we'd like to break that off tonight. Certainly, run support. He is the best supported starting pitcher in the rotation, most receiving around three runs per start. Jake's getting around seven overall, and he has been a royal pain. Against the Royals in two starts, 1 0 with an outstanding ERA of 3.18. The Orioles, if they can pick up the victory here tonight, will have their eighth series win guaranteed to them, as their uh, series numbers would actually be evened up with a victory in this game. They are 7 8 and 1 right now on the season. Also, of course, looking for their 23rd win of the year, trying to get back to that 500 mark. Here is Alex Gordon, the leadoff batter. Newly positioned in the leadoff spot. He got a home run in the third solo shot. He's now got a five game hit streak seven for 21 during the streak with a couple of home runs. And that was his lone hit in the ball game last night as he ended up with a one for five. There are the numbers on the season for Gordon. He's been in this number one leadoff spot now for uh, about a week and uh, obviously starting to pick the pace up. He had. A uh, bunt that he laid down in the ball game in the first inning last night. A beautiful bunt. It was the first bunt hit that he had had since 2009 against the Yankees. Because generally he's been hitting in the middle of the order. The 1 0 delivery to him, and Arietta will get a strike on him and a one ball, one strike count. Yeah, we'll see how Jake Arietta comes out for this one. It's a, He's had runs during the year. He had a run from about mid April to mid May where he had seven consecutive starts where he allowed three runs or less. Little blip on the radar last time out against the Nationals. Pitch will be taken up high. In the 10 games he has started previously, the ball club has won seven of those 10 games. He has. A five and two mark himself on the year. Here's the two one delivery to Gordon, and that is going to be swung on and missed, and a two ball, two strike out. Yeah, well located, well thrown. You see his last time out against the Nationals, three and two thirds, six hits, six runs, three walks, three strikeouts. Third shortest outing of his career in that last game. Two two delivery to Gordon, and it's swung on and missed. Boy, Gordon didn't look like he was getting a very good view of the baseball. Didn't look like he was ready. Maybe it's a little bit of twilight time, but 94 on the gun, but right to the glove. Just a perfect pitch. That's one thing I was a little critical of Arietta's last start out. Threw a lot of 3-2 breaking balls, 2-2 breaking balls. Really pitching sort of away from contact and didn't work out real well. This is a good example that maybe he's gone back to plan A, which yes. is... You'll see our pitch track tonight sponsored by Papa John's. Order online, PapaJohns.com. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. This is what this is what I do like about Jake Arrieta, that he will adjust from one, one start from, from the next or learn from his previous start. Melky Cabrera, 1-0 delivery to him will be up high. Cabrera had a two for five in the ball game last night. He is a switch hitter in this lineup. The lefties hitting only 207 off Arietta. The right handers 264. So again, as we see so often, the reverse numbers from what you might expect. Yeah, it's a big adjustment from Jake from last year to this year. He really is a completely different pitcher. Last year, I would say his breaking ball was average, command was average. And now he's much better control. His delivery is much more under control. He used to land on his heel and sort of spin off and some of these others. He has that all under control and it's allowed his control to get better. Arietta's got a 2 2 count on Cabrera and tapped down to third base. That's right off the end of the bat. Long throw, Reynolds. Good stretch. No. It'll get away. Good backup made 
And Cabrera quickly gets back to the bag. Ryan Adams got over there behind Luke Scott. It'll be an error called. Tough error, but a good throw would have gotten him. Yeah, real tough error going away from first base on the run. Judgment call. That's one of those that could be changed as we move along in the ball game. But for the moment, Reynolds gets charged with the error. And Cabrera is on first base. Here is Eric Hosmer, their young first baseman. He had a one for five in the ball game last night, his first appearance here at Camden Yards and against the Orioles. He was not with the ball club when they were in Kansas City. And the pitch will be taken inside for a ball. Only 21 years old, outstanding glove, uh, good bat, power bat. And uh, Kansas City, as we mentioned last night, they're moving so many of these young players along in a hurry. Pitchers and position players. 1 0 count. Cabrera at first base not going. Off speed breaking ball is going to miss 2 0. First breaking balls we've seen from Marietta, but, but you're right. When you look at Hosmer and when you look at a young player, you can usually tell by the pace, the way he carries himself around the ballpark, the way he goes into the batter's box. You know, the, the good ones and the real good ones have that pace to their game. This team has stolen more bases than anyone else in the league. Cabrera, five out of six, he's on at first base. Orioles very uh, aware, obviously, of that coming into this series. Eddie Rodriguez with the signs at third. A 3 0 count on Hosma as Arietta has not been able to find the strike zone. Let's see if Ned Yost lets him swing away. One would doubt it here as they want to get some runners on. He does take all the way, and it's in there for a strike. Arietta against Kansas City, 1 0 with the two previous starts, ERA of 3.18 against them. Here in the ballpark this year at Camden Yards, he's gone 2 and 2 with a high ERA of 5.8. Runner not going, foul back, and he comes back on him, and the count goes to 3 and 2. Let's take a look at our league leaderboard brought to you by Lexus of Towson, Baltimore area's number one Lexus dealer. We we'll invite you to come see why they are number one. Most deals in the American League, 51 Kansas City. Rangers are not far behind. Then you've got Tampa Bay, Toronto, and the Angels. Actually, a lot of stolen bases right there for those ball clubs at the top. 3 2 runner going. And again, fouled away. And Cabrera will make his way back. Kansas City last night. Taking a little uh, playbook from them was the Orioles. It's the Royals who've had a lot of comeback wins this season and uh, have won a lot of one run ball games. They're 11 and 7 in those, but it was the Orioles that came back with three runs in the bottom of the ninth to gain that victory from KC. Runner goes again. Hosmer in the air to right field. And Kekos has this one lined up. Big time fly ball. We just missed it a little bit underneath it. Felix P.A. will be in left field tonight. Adam Jones in center field. Nick Markakis will man right field. Reynolds and Hardy on the left side. Ryan Adams gets the start tonight at second base. And Luke Scott at first base. So a different right side to the infield tonight. Matt Weeders behind the plate. And now with two away. Cabrera remains at first base. And here is Jeff Francoeur. Francoeur has had a home run in the three times he's been up against Arietta. He had a couple of hits and five at bats last night. Francoeur has always been a real tough out for the Orioles. He's five for 16 this year against the O's. He's got two home runs and four RBIs on the season against Baltimore. Arietta slows the game down with that runner on at first base. Not a big lead for Cabrera. Throw over Scott in the dirt. Stop it. They stole a base on Weeders in the ball game last night, but only one. Matt now has thrown out 14 out of 29 on the year. Continues to lead Major League catchers. And the pitch will be up high. Looked like a slider that got up and a one ball, one strike count. Yeah, pitches at the 92 to 94 range here. Slider has been about 88. 
18 pitches thrown. Seemed like he was going to get through the inning with less than that. All it takes is one long at bat. We saw that in that national series, what one long at bat can do. And the pitch again will be taken up high, and he really a very awkward follow through on that. Let's take a look at it. Yeah, just kind of pulled off at the end. Not sure. I really didn't see a miss land. But yeah, it was a 10 pitch, 10 pitch at bat against Danny Espinosa. And finally hit a three run homer off Arietta. And he's been up high with all of these, Mike. Yeah, it just seems to be, I don't know, a little off. This is one of those where the trainer may be coming to the front of the dugout. Some very awkward deliveries and follow throughs on a three ball, one strike count on Frank Gore. At first base, Cabrera, there are two down. If Cabrera takes off, he does. And that'll be foul back. And the count goes full three and two. Let's take a look at Arietta's delivery. Hand lift, low leg kick. Yeah, looks like it maybe may landed with a little bit of a locked front leg. And that right leg, that back leg, Mike, it didn't seem to move very much, did it? No, that's there's I don't know. There's there's something seems to be going on with the delivery. It, it lost its smoothness all of a sudden. Runner goes again, ball down the right field side, headed into foul territory. And the count will remain at three balls and two strikes. Let's take one more look at it. Don't know. Yes, it's hard to tell, but it just seems to be a little out of whack. Now, whether there's something going on or not, hard to tell. Like you see, everybody's kind of glued to him at the moment. 3 2 will be coming again to Francoeur on the 23rd pitch of the first inning. Runner going again. And this is the area, one of the areas where Arietta is trying to make the improvement to get his efficiency up and get out of these innings without throwing as many pitches so he can. Stay in a ball game for that extra inning or more. Yeah, he's never pitched more than seven and two thirds innings. And again, if you go back to last time out against the Nationals and three and two thirds, he threw 91 pitches. Mm. And you know, you only have an allotment of uh, right around 100. The most he's thrown in a game is 108. Cabrera's running again, and he got him. So Arietta gets a couple of strikeouts, no runs, no hits, an error, and a base runner left on. We'll take a look at the Orioles lineup coming back. And the Orioles looking to even up their home record. They are 13 and 14 at home on the season. Let's take a look at the starting lineup brought to you by Southwest Airlines. P.A. Jones and Marquecas, Guerrero, Weeders and Scott, Reynolds, Hardy and Ryan Adams with the Vladdy on a nine game hit streak. Let's take a look at uh, Luke Ochaver for the Kansas City Royals. May is OK. He's had a one and one record with an outstanding 257 ERA. And four quality starts in May. Rebounding. He's had a, sort of a hot and cold young career so far. Quality guy. 
four quality starts in May and square footage has given up a lot of footage this year 13 home runs allowed that is tied for the most in the major leagues. O'Shaver 22 wins 36 losses in his young career and the pitch will be taken by P.A. for a strike. Left handers hitting 245 off O'Shaver so P.A. gets the start and gets that leadoff spot to play in left field. Tried to bunt his way on. That'll be foul back. And it'll go to two strikes in a hurry. Yeah, if you look at the Oil lineup, if you're uh, Hochaver trying to dissect the lineup, the top three hitters in this lineup, P.A. Jones and Marquecas, big time numbers against Hochaver. The bottom of the order, one for 23. P.A. Jones and Marquecas, nine for 22 with eight RBIs. And a two strike count. Hochaver's pitch, and he got him. So O'Shaver starts it out in a hurry as he gets the strikeout. Establishing the breaking ball early. 0 2 pitch. Never mind wasting one. Pretty much right down the middle of the plate. Well, here's the hero from last night who gets a nice hand from the Orioles crowd. Came in with the uh, double and then the game winning homer over the last 13 games. A big 382 average with 10 RBI and six doubles. And even survived the beating at home plate. And the pie in the face. <laughs> All of that. <laughs> All in one night. All in one night. And look at this. He bunts Hoshaver backhands and makes a real nice play. So Jones trying to get on against Bedevitt, but Hoshaver got in front of his third baseman. Yeah, much like uh, Alex Gordon last night. You make up your mind when you're going to bunt for a base hit, probably when you're on deck circle. PA faked one. Jones lays one down. They so follow up a game winning homer. With a attempted bunt. With the, with the eliminate surprise. Yeah. Now here's Hoshaver, four pitches, and he's got two outs. Here's Nick Marquegas. Nick also has got the nine game hit streak going. The delivery to him, and he'll take that for a strike. Nick had a one for four in the ball game last night. He's continued his consecutive series with a hit streak to 156 now. 0 oh, 1 delivery to him, and that'll be taken inside. He's gone two for six with a home run lifetime off O'Shaver. The three for nine, brother, and the home run. Here's the 1 1 delivery on the way, and a ground ball towards second base. Gets is up with it, and will record the out. So a very easy inning for O'Shaver here in the first as he retires the side. 1 2 3, seven pitches. Contestant of the game is Robin Dixon from Gambrels. For every double play the Orioles turn during tonight's game, Robin's going to win $1,000 from the Maryland Lottery. See how you can turn double plays into cash and enter to win for a chance at Amazing O's prizes. Just go to mdlottery.com slash double play. Robin, good luck. O'Shaver getting the quick inning. And now Billy Butler will lead it off. 
the designated hitter last night with a two for four. He's on a run, seven for 19 over the last games, and he, uh, he too falls into that category of a real Oriole nemesis. He has always hit well against the Orioles, and he will take that for a strike. And he's always been a solid left field, left center field, right center field type hitter, line drive hitter. It's a lot of doubles. 308 lifetime average. Four home runs, 20 RBIs against the Orioles in his career. And Arietta will miss with that one in a one ball, one strike count. Jake Arietta, 73% effective in retiring leadoff batters. Good number. Butler with a 1 1. And the fastball, a little bit inside and high in a 2 1 count. Kansas City team, good offensive club. They're a challenge for pitchers, both on the base pass and at the plate. And Butler's going to take the pitch inside. Butler's a real good on percentage player. He's always up among the uh, leaders in on base percentage and in walks. He's got 28 tied for eight in walks. 3 1 delivery to him and add another. So Arietta will not get the leadoff batter here as Butler's on with a free pass. A lot of pitches up high in the first two innings. Yeah, it's hard to figure. Started off the game so well, and <clears throat> his numbers are somewhat misleading for Marietta. He's only allowed two of his 29 runs in the first inning, but the second and third inning, for whatever reason, he's allowed 17 runs. That's kind of the bottom of the. Yeah. You think it was the bottom of the uh, the order in the second, so it really doesn't. I'm not sure why that is. There is Wilson Benavent. Betterment will take the breaking ball. It is in there for a strike. He is having a real good start. He is ninth in the league in batting average coming into today's play with that 310 batting average number. He's having a little discussion there with Andy Fletcher, the home plate umpire, about that first call. Runner at first base, and that will be taken one and one. Betterman is also the seventh best average against right handed pitchers at 316. On at first base, Butler. Not a very big lead. Luke Scott holding and swung it a pitch away. Helped him out that time, one and two. Yeah, that's the movement on the area at a fastball that causes that swing and a miss. Looks like it's destined for the outside part of the plate. And watch Betterman change a chase it. There are the numbers versus the Orioles big time for Betterman, but he's only three for 14 this year against the O's. And that will be taken inside and a two ball, two strike count. So Arietta continues to uh, throw a lot of pitches here in the second inning as he did in the first. Not getting uh, the quick outs he had hoped for, looking for the ground ball here with Butler on at first base. Outfield deep 2 2 delivery and Betterman chases another and boy some help right there as Arietta gets the strikeout. That's like a straight change up to me or it takes a little off the bottom falls out of it. Yeah. Almost like a BP fastball. Most fastballs been about 94 that one was 88 on the gun. 33 strikeouts on the year for Wilson Betterman that's second high on the team. And the uh, third base umpire having to leave here. There is uh, Gary Cedarstrom, who is the crew chief. So we have a three man crew for the moment. Here's Matt Trainer. Trainer did not play in the ball game last night. The catcher and the numbers he's put up in the season. He got tossed out of Sunday's game in the uh, seventh inning by the home plate umpire, with whom he thought he had entered a reasonable discussion. Found out later it wasn't solid. <laughs> Probably a little shorter than he had hoped for. And uh, <laughs> taking up high and a 2 0 count. So Arietta's working behind uh, these hitters. It's not getting the first strikes. Arietta's walked three batters each of the last three. 
Nine walks, 15 and two thirds innings for that grouping. Here's the 2 0 delivery, and he was trying to jump on one and fouled it right straight back. And the big difference uh, for me between Arietta last year and this year is that walk the strikeouts. Last year he had 48 walks and 52 strikeouts in 100 innings. And now in about half as many innings, he's cut it to a 2 to 1 ratio. So already more strikeouts in 55 innings, or right about the same number than he had all of last year in 100 innings. 2 1 delivery on the way to him and trainer will take the pitch and it's going to miss outside. So a three ball one strike count. So that may be the pitch I have a little bit of problem with 2 1 breaking ball when you're struggling with your control. I mean to me what he did so well was coming out in the first against Gordon and just throwing low pump and low and away fastball so they prove they can hit it. Runner at first base with one away and a three ball one strike count on Matt trainer fired from the Rangers. He'll take the strike on the inside corner. Gets that late movement that fools trainer. Weeder sitting on the outside corner, right on the inside corner. So we get our 4 3 ball count. It is a 3 2 count here on trainer. Trainer's already drawn 21 walks. He had 22 all of last year with Texas a career high. He's got 21 right now. And he's gone. He was looking for a walk, and he's not going to get it. Four strikeouts for Arietta. See, that's what I'm talking about with Arietta in the fastball. He's got a real good one tonight. You know, some nights you need to mix in all your other pitches more when you don't have your good fastball. But when you have 94 miles an hour and you have command, smiling Gary Cedarstrom. So Gary Cedars from back out. Setting sun. On this beautiful evening. Two down. Here's Chris Getz. Getz did not play in the ball game last night either. And uh, another left handed bat in there. Getz will take it up high for a ball. Speedster. 232 though on the year. Had a good start. It has dropped off a bit for Getz. Arietta's pitch to him is way up high. Weeders wants a timeout. Is going to go talk to him. Not sure what this is all about, but boy, there are a lot of pitches that are way up. Yeah, it, it seems like he'll lock in for a string of three or four pitches and be right on, and then he'll go through a stretch of four or five where he misses badly. Arietta working against this Central Division ball club, Mike, where he's had a lot of success. Yeah, 4 0 against the Central this year. His first four wins of the year. 188 ERA against the Central. And another one that's up high. And the count goes to 3 0. I just made that's a timing issue to be under it and high. Usually means you're getting down the slope too fast. And your arm doesn't have a chance to catch up, and it's going to be late delivering the ball. 3 0 delivery, and Getz will take it, and that's up high, and he walked him. So a leadoff walk and now a two out walk two on two down and Mark Connor is going to make his way out to try and correct whatever the problem is. Yeah an inning of a walk two strikeouts and a walk. It's a little bit like that last start against the Nationals which ended up being a disaster. He struck out the first two batters of the game then gave up two straight base hits second inning comes out walks the first two and then gives up the. I think 11 pitch three run homer to Espinoza. And the next inning he went out retired to side in order. And the next inning back to the you know to the walks and the base hits. It's just never seemed to get into a flow. Sometimes you lock in as a pitch and go well that's it. Now I'm going to stay right with that. I mean 44 pitches have already been thrown. In an inning and two thirds. And again three and two thirds last time 91. So you had him it's 100 and but 140 pitches. The last five innings. Here is the number nine hitter, Alcides Escobar, the shortstop. He had an 0 for 3 in the ball game last night. Two on and two down. And he goes after the first pitch. Holy cow! At third base, Reynolds in foul territory, and he's got it. And that will retire the side. Someday, Mike, you can explain that to me. No runs, no hits, and two are left on base.
second inning brought to you by uh, Luna. The Orioles season high five doubles picked up in the ball game last night. Jones included in the mix as was Hardy as was P.A. 16 doubles five games. Call today for the Luna double. Get your second Roma flooring free. Call 877-241-LUNA. Vladimir Guerrero first ball hitting up the middle. Let's get that hit streak going. Orioles get their first hit. vladdy has got a 10 game hit streak and the leadoff man on here in the second inning. Now wasting no time. Watch the Vlad and BP today. He had everything he saw right back up the middle. Practice how you take that right into the ball game. Tonight's expo brought to you by the Volkswagen going going on event. Great deals are here not for long. Visit VWDealer.com. So Vladdy is on. Now here is Matt Wieters. And he will take it for a strike. For Wieters last night RBI double in the six just missed the home run. Continues to lead the American League with runners in scoring position at 576. Owen delivery Hoshaver, and that'll be taken down low. And a one ball, one strike count. Luke Hoshaver, ball club is six and four in the ten starts he has made. Coming off an outing against Texas where he gave up only a run on six hits in eight and two thirds innings. He was non decision. Ball game went extra innings, and Kansas City won it. And we fouled off outside of first base, and it's one and two. O'Shavis had very little luck against the Orioles, as he has an 0 3 record in the previous four starts. His ERA against the Orioles is 7 6, 7.6. He has not appeared against the Orioles since July 30 of 2009 was his last outing against the O's. Timeout was taken at the plate. He's had a couple of blocks called against him this year. We'll see whether or not we see anything that might evidence why that's happened. One two delivery on the way. That's a ground ball for two. Escobar gets and Hosmer. That was Taylor May. You said that that's the one you practice at about 530 every day of nice. Let's see two hopper chest high chest feed. Something they practice uh, daily. That will bring up Luke Scott last night a big pinch hit was an RBI single that came in the sixth. And uh, that was his 10th career RBI as a pinch hitter. And now with the right hand around the mound he gets to start at first base. And that is going to be in there for a strike to Luke Scott. Orioles expecting uh, to make a roster change for tomorrow's game. Tatum will probably be up to do the catching in the ball game tomorrow but really not much even on the rumor side of it as to who was going to be the one off the roster for tomorrow's game. It'll be Buck Showalter. Yeah, let's see how it goes, I believe, through this game. Yeah. Kind of what the short term needs are. Here's the 1 1 delivery to Scott. Way out in front of that. Good change up 1 and 2. And it's been a steady diet of that for Luke Scott. Out early today, taking some extra hitting. But the league has definitely made an adjustment. It is really common knowledge from every place we go now. They just don't throw many fastballs. When in doubt, they throw a change up. One two delivery and that's going to be a base hit into right field. So Scott gets out of an 0 for 9 that he had against Toshaver as he picks up a two out single. Orioles Royals are going to wrap up this three game set tomorrow. Tomorrow note the start time now it's a day game 1235. So you can skip out of work early get your Memorial Day weekend started with a great afternoon of baseball here at Camden Yards. Get your tickets in advance 888-848-BIRD to go to Orioles.com. It's a day game, Mike. Yep, the old 12:35 the old day game. 12:35 <laughs> start tomorrow. Check swing and a slider strike. Reynolds one for six off Hoshaver, runner at first base. Orioles with their second hit of the ball game.
Looking for his first hit of this series. Down to third. Betterman's going to force and will go to Getz and get it. No runs, two hits, no errors, one left on base. We've completed two. Zip zip. The broadcast booth, but we're banging. One of the many food and beverage changes here is the Old Bay Seafood Stand on the lower level concourse. You can get the crab cake sandwich with Old Bay seasoning and Natty Bowl beer battered soft shell crab sandwich. Oh I mean, goodness. we need some of those. <laughs> and the rolling crab, a Tex Mex style egg that's an egg roll packed with crab meat. Man, oh man, the Old Bay Seafood Stand right here at Camden Yards. Bring your appetite. Okay, we did. Yep, you're definitely looking for dinner for free. I'll even pay for it. <laughs> I will pay for the soft shell crab. Well, there's three of us up here. Bring them up here. Yep, dinner for free. We'll pay for them. <laughs> but bring them up here. I went out looking at lunchtime today trying to find a soft shell crab sandwich, and unfortunately, the restaurant wasn't open for lunch. <laughs> I was. <laughs> Back to the top of the order is Gordon. He struck out his first time up. Arietta with a couple of walks and four strikeouts so far. Gordon, Cabrera, and Hosmer. A breaking ball, and again, it'll be a little bit high and inside, and a one ball, one strike count. Gordon has the five game hit streak, getting the average up to 282, and he'll put that one to the gap. The Orioles we're not playing him that way. It'll take a hop and go up and over. And another ground rule double, the 100th double for the Kansas City Royals, leading the American League in that department. Now they've hit a lot of doubles, triples, and hit their share of home runs along the way, too. 1 1 pitch. This one's up and out over plate. First time around, you, you go off of how you worked them last time. Last time, you stayed exclusively away from Gordon. This time, he goes with it. Nice adjustment. Looks like he's uh, beginning to enjoy that leadoff spot. There's a change of mentality. His swing seems shorter, more compact. Well, we saw a bunt last night. Yeah. Start playing a little ball game, taking more pitches. Here is Melky Cabrera. What was that? A second chance on a bunt. Arietta will get him, but he got it down, and he gets the runner moved over. It didn't really look like a, a sacrifice because watch how late Cabrera sets up to bunt it. Ends up being pretty much right back at Arietta. They will give him the sacrifice on that. So Cabrera gets Gordon moved over to third base. That is his first sacrifice of the year. And you almost get the feeling he did it on his own. Yeah. And had second thoughts about it. <laughs> <laughs> about halfway. The ball was halfway to the plate. But no. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Here is Haas where he flat out to right field. Very deep on him at short and second. And the pitch is in the dirt. Weeders will block it. This is really when you, you go for the strikeout. So probably through this at bat, we'll tell you what Arietta believes his best pitch is tonight. He has four strikeouts, three of them swinging. Osmer in his young career, three for 17. 
with runners in scoring position. Rookie. 1 0 count, runner off third base, one down. And that pitch is going to miss, and the count will go to 2 0 on Hosmer. He, like the Orioles, Adam Jones, a bubble blower during action. Adam blows bubbles and he makes catches in the outfield. Hosmer blows bubbles, always waiting between pitches. And a strike on the inside corner, and the count will go to 2 1. There they are. He's eating out there now. <laughs> it's like sunflower seeds. You want a crab sandwich? Soft shell. It's really good. <laughs> Can't put it in your back pocket. It's hard to blow those sunflower seeds, it too. Is. Shells just don't expand like the, the gum does. Two on delivery, and again, Weeders. And a three ball, one strike count. You almost get the feeling Arietta's adjusting on every pitch, the one that's up, then the next one. He tries to bring down and it ends up exactly. Third. Yeah, you, you hang one, then you try to you know finish it off, and it's almost an overcorrection back and forth. But he is telling you that his breaking ball he thinks is his best pitch tonight. Here's the three-one delivery on the way, and that is taken for a strike. Low middle fastball. So he's got a chance for that strikeout. Mike was talking about now three and two. Now recently, and the reason part of the reason that Marietta's strikeouts totals have gone up. Is the 3 2 breaking ball. Hasn't had great command of it tonight. But that's his strikeout pitch. 3 2 delivery on the way. Haas will file it off. There it was. The O's return to Camden Yards Friday, June 3. Can you believe that? We're into June. And a nine game homestand Jays, A's, and Rays. How about that? It all rhymes. Add a little Orioles magic to Birdland Summer and get your tickets in advance. 888 848 Bird to go to Orioles.com. Orioles will be on the road here for the holiday weekend. Oakland and Seattle. 3 2 delivery and got him. He jackknifed away, but not even close to being near the body. Five Ks. Now, perfect pitch execution. First time they go in to a left hander tonight, and he throws a perfect blockout pitch on the corner. Excellent pitch. Our pitch track sponsored by Verizon 4G LTE ruled the air on the most advanced 4G network in the world. Jeff Francoeur now with two down and a runner at third base. He was a strikeout victim his first time up. Francoeur, dangerous RBI man. He's sitting at even 300 with runners in sp scoring position coming into this ball game. Well, it also tells you that Arietta feels better about his windup than his stretch position. The runner on third, he's able to wind up. And Frank Clore trying to jump on it, fouls it back, and it goes to 0 2. It's Gordon on third doing some dancing around. A lot of times that'll drive the pitcher in the stretch position just for the comfort level, but he's been jockeying and bluffing down the third baseline. Gordon is the runner. Alex Gordon at third base. Here's the two strike delivery. He'll be up high with that and one ball, two strike count on Francoeur. Francoeur with a one for four now off Arietta. Arietta's had as many as nine strikeouts in a ball game. He did that against the Yankees, getting his career high. Souvenir back into the seats. And the count remains at one and two. Arietta here at home this year has gone two and two. His ERA is 5.8. On the road, he's three and zero. Oh. His ERA is 3.38. He's faced the uh, Tigers, Texas Twins, Yankees, and Seattle here at home. Brand Core providing the souvenir again. They're working awful hard to keep this. Score scoreless. Already 61 pitches thrown and about 50 50, 28 balls, 33 strikes to get here. It's been work. Alex Gordon still over there at third base. Here's the 1 2 delivery. Frank Core trying to time it goes to left. Felix PA will be there and he's got it. And as he's done so often this year, Arietta finds a way to work out of these potential jams. Let's go.
Weiser, great times are waiting. Grab some butts. Gary Thorne, Mike Flanagan, and our great crew here at Camden Yards as the Orioles. In Kansas City play game two of the three games set tomorrow. Day game, 1235. Jeremy Guthrie and another left-hander, Jeff Francis. And here is Hardy, who had a two for three in the ball game last night. Two doubles and a run. He had one hit in the previous six games. He was one for 21. Yeah, big hit in last night's game in the ninth inning against Joaquin Soria to get that winning rally started. Buck Showalter was asked prior to the game today, would you think about moving Hardy into the leadoff spot with all these changes you're going through? And he said, probably not. So it's not because he couldn't do it, but we like having Hardy's bat towards the bottom part of this lineup. He's delivered some big hits, some RBIs, and moves people around. Just likes the feel of Hardy hitting eighth or ninth in the lineup rather than up top. 2 0 delivery is a comebacker. Hoshaver's got it. One away. Take a look at our streaks ahoy. Uh, last night, CC Sabathia had a complete game. He ended the Yankees' 341 game streak without a nine inning complete game, second longest in MLB history. Jason Veritek, he ended a homerless streak, 117 at bats, third longest of his career. And David DeJesus, two home run ball game against Heron last night. It's his second multi homer game of the month. He had never had one in his career. Extending some eight seasons. That is swung on and missed by Adams. Major League debut. Ryan Adams getting the call up Friday night. Got his first Major League hit out of the way, and they're coming around to score a run. Baseball will make it to the mantle. Now back in the lineup and starting at second base, and a one ball, one strike count, hitting ninth. Felix PA waiting on deck. 1 1 delivery to Adams and a chopper to second this time gets. And there are two down. Let's take a look at our PNC minor league report brought to you by PNC for the achiever in you. Caleb Joseph, one of my favorites. He loves hockey. You can see what he's uh, doing at Bowie Double A, hitting 274, three home runs, 20 RBIs. Scored uh, 13 runs and uh, one of the really good guys in baseball. I really enjoy spring training. I love being around spending yeah. some time with him. Yeah. Loves to talk sports, talk to game. He's a real intelligent catcher who thinks and talks about the game a lot. Watches and different games, not only ones he's playing in at his level, but others as well. He'll be a manager someday. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing how many really come from the catching position. It's the whole field's right there in front of you. Here's the 1 0 delivery in Felix PA eaten up by a pitch inside. PA called out on strikes his first time up. Two down, nobody on. O'Shaver is walked none, struck out one. He's been efficient. And a seven pitch. First inning, and he's kind of kept that streak going. Play made by Gatsy retires the side in order for the second time, and it remains 0 0.
talk with Buck Showalter before the game about that great walk-off home run by Jones last night. And how exciting is it for the manager? You know, the thrill of victory and the agony of uh, what could be. <laughs> but it was, uh, I, I was happy for them. You know, we, we hung around. We got some good innings out of the bullpen. But, you know, as I've gotten older, I've, I've learned to kind of step back and take in a moment because they're kind of fleeting sometimes. But uh, that, that was fun. And um, uh, Jones had put a good at bat on a real good reliever. Buck has said that a number of times in different ways about stepping back, about watching, about taking a moment. As the as the years go by and he's managing, more and more he wants to really be in the present and enjoy that part of the game. Yeah, it almost seems like there's a, a separation. Uh, there was another game, I think, forget the exact circumstances, but the Orioles won it late in the game with the base hit, and, then, and they had that shot of Buck standing at the top of the dugout. You know, almost like a little bit like an outsider enjoying yeah. it. Well, I think he does that a little. Many times now. Butler up the middle and he's got a base hit. He drew a walk his first time up so he gets a leadoff single here in the fourth inning. Our Pep Boys game flow brought to you by Pep Boys. Pep Boys does everything for less. Call 1-800-PEP-BOYS. Arietta with a couple of walks and five strikeouts while Hoshaver on the other side hasn't walked anybody and struck out one. The pitchers have dominated. Orioles really haven't had a chance offensively while the Royals have already stranded four. And now leadoff man on here. In the fourth inning. Nick Arietta's had the leadoff man on in the three out of the four innings. And a one strike count on Betterman who is a strikeout victim. Arietta with Butler on at first base. He had the leadoff walk in the second and got stranded at second base. And Betterment will take the pitch inside and a one ball, one strike count. Real good road hitter. Betterment hitting a 360 in road games this year. Second best number in the American League in that department. Very short lead at first base for Butler, and Butterman will take it down low. Weeders has had a night of blocking some baseballs. He's been busy. I mean, that is not the easiest pitcher to catch. Moving fastball at that slider, end up in a dirt a lot. His changeup can be down. Arietta does not have a uh, wild pitch this year, which is pretty amazing. <laughs> Yes, he has. They just haven't got by Weeders. By him. <laughs> Ask Weeders that question. Yeah. See what he says. Yeah, count the black and blue marks. Two ball, one strike count. Runner not going. Off speed pitch. Popped him up. Second base. Brian Adams is under it. He's got it. One away. Sometimes you think Jake Arrieta is like some of the closers around baseball who can't really get into it until somebody's on base. Jake seems to have to have somebody on base in order to really bear down and get the outs. Trouble is that increases that pitch count. It's tough being a starter and doing living, yeah. living like that. Yeah. So one away. That trainer called out on strikes his first time up. And he will take the strike. Get exclusive O's coverage to your mobile phone. Text Orioles 29292. Message and data rates may apply. I was just saying, you know, Arias is just another one of these pitchers. He does not give in. He's just not going to give in and throw it down the middle and, and say, get yourself out. I mean, he, he works at it. He works at getting you out. And he'll miss away with that and a one ball, one strike count. Boston bombarded Cleveland today, 14 to 2 in a day game. Talbot took the loss. Lester's now 7 and 1. He went. Six innings gave up no runs on three hits for the Red Sox. Pedroia had a three RBI day. Salta Lamacchia had a three RBI day. Now the Red Sox starting to put some wins together over the Indians who have that best record in the American League. Checking down at third base. Matt Trainer with a two ball one strike count. A pitch, a good one, and broke down and away from him, two and two. Again, yeah, this is the much improved breaking ball. Of Jake Arietta's right in and to the corner.
Two ball, two strike count. Not a base stealer with Butler at first. A little good chance for a double play if he can get a ground ball here. There it is. Arietta. Hardy. And they turn two. I think we've just given away a thousand dollars. We'll find out who won that when we come back. Jones by Kegas Guerrero do it. And the Orioles indeed have turned to double play and we've got a winner in our Maryland Lottery double play feature and Robin Dixon has just won a thousand dollars on that double play turned by the O's. Congratulations Robin. 0 2 and 0 for the Royals 0 2 and 1 for the Orioles and another pitchers dual ball game. Luke Koshaver on the mound. This is a guy who's tied for first and home runs surrendered with 13 in the league. He's given up the fifth most earned runs in the league. But he's a ground ball pitcher and when he's on he gets them 60 percent of the time and that's what he's doing tonight. He's had the Orioles just pounding the ball into Mother Earth. Here is Jones. Adam grounded out his first time up and that's a foul ball. The home run he had last night came on an 0 2 count against Joaquin Sorio, blew the save and took the loss. Kind of numbers for both of them. For Soria, the second time in his career he's allowed a homer on an 0 2 pitch. And for Jones, that's uh, in 55 homers he had, it's only the second one he's had on an 0 2 count. And that'll be in the air to right field. Frank Cora going back, and that's going to be up off the scoreboard. Frank Cora with a great arm gets the throw in, but not in time. A double for Jones. And that just shows you the running speed of Adam Jones. Frank Cora had his hand on this ball before Adam was a few steps past first base. And another high pitch is clubbed the other way. Adam Jones really showing some short bat speed. Watch this one hand hop and on the way. Right on the money. Well, Adam Jones continues this red hot month of May. Came in hitting 369. The Orioles now with a great RBI chance. Here's Marquegas. He will take the pitch for a ball. Nick grounded out his first time up. This is where the Orioles have been making RBIs. Jones, Marquecas, and uh, Vladimir combined 349 in the month of May, their combined average. Yeah, Here's the 1 0 delivery to him. He actually fouled that off. For the Orioles, they'd like to get a few more into this group. Yeah, but those three right there, Jones, Marquecas, and Guerrero, really carrying the club on their backs this month. They've all raised their average uh, enormously over the month. You, know, you bunch three three hot hitters together. You can score some runs. One ball, one strike count. Escobar holding Jones at second base, and Marquez will take it away. 
Certainly would not think Hoshaver wants to pitch Marquegas away with the shortstop holding second base. Gives him a lot of room to put a ground ball into left field. And that's like almost like when they hold a runner on at first base, there's such a big gap between Bediment and Escobar. Here's the 2 1 delivery. Marquegas goes that way. He's got a base hit. Played by Gordon. He's got a great arm. Jones will be held right to the cutoff man. The Orioles have covered the corners here with nobody out. And a 10 game hit streak for Mark Akis. Yeah, just a beautiful swing by Mark Akis up and out over the plate. Jones has all the intent of trying to score and gets the stop sign from Willie Randolph. You got to think twice before you do much running. On outfielders in this ball game, as we've got four of the five of the leaders in outfield assists in this game. And you know, with, with PA in the outfield, it may be the that's Guerrero's ground ball runner coming. Play is going to be at first, and that's an RBI. Guerrero gets the run in. Jones scores, and the Orioles have a one nothing lead. It wasn't real pretty, but it works extremely well. You stay out of the double play. Top ground ball to third. No chance even to get a play at second base. So a very productive out by Vladimir Guerrero. So the Orioles get on the board. And Vladimir Guerrero gets it done with his 20th run batted in. Marquegas moves down to second base. And one away. And Matt Wieters, who hit into a double play his first time up. This is the spot he excels at with that 576 average with runners in scoring position leading the league. I'll tell you about those arms. Jones and Francoeur are tied for outfield assists with six. Gordon, who's playing in left field, has got five. Cabrera's got five in center field. And Marquecas has got four in right field. And Jones, like you said, has the six in PA. Who hasn't played a lot in left field, has a very accurate and strong throwing arm. He had the first assist of the year thrown out a runner at the plate. So you may have the six best throwing outfielders, certainly in the league. 2 0 count, Matt Wieters. It's the count to work with here and will step out as Hoshaver stepped off. Two all count Orioles a run on four hits now Marquegas off second. And Wieters will take the pitch and he gets ahead on it three and oh. There you see the highest averages with runners in scoring position. Where Matt Wieters has been number one right from the get go this year. In fact he's got the best average in the majors. In that department. Taking a pitch and it's in there. I guess he's never not led in that category when you do it your first seven for seven. Overall, Weeders now hitting at 271. Barry is taking a look around. Escobar, the shortstop, will hold him somewhat close, but not near the bag. And he wants it. Shaver almost. Pitched around Matt Weeders there like he didn't really want to go after him. That seems like the uh, reputation may have pre preceded itself. First walk given up by Hoshaver. And now runners at first and second, and Luke Scott, who had a single his first time up, comes to the plate. Scott had gone 0 for 9 against Hoshaver prior to picking up that base hit. And the Orioles are only one away have a chance here at a big inning. Down to third and foul. I want to remind you Sunday June 12 the first 20,000 fans 15 and over at the Orioles Rays game will get the O's cap presented by DAP annual favorite. We hope you'll come out in the afternoon and get it. That's June 12. Tickets cheaper in advance 888-848-BIRD to go to Orioles.com. Scott with an 0 1 count. Runners off first and second. Luke could not hold up on that.
breaking ball to him down and in on two. You have a sweepy slider, 85 miles an hour. Well, Shaver gets ahead of him, a two strike count. Pretty much straight up on Luke Scott. A little bit of a move to right by Cabrera in center, but not much. 0-2 delivery. And Scott will hit it fair. That's going to go into the corner to Fran Cor. That will score Marquegas. Waiters on his way to third. He will stop there. An RBI double for Luke Scott. Two to nothing Orioles. Hanging breaking ball from Hochaver right in the middle of the plate. Luke Scott's right on it. That's the thing with Hochaver. He hasn't given up many hits, but when he does, they're usually for the extra base hits. A couple of doubles this inning already off him. So credit Luke Scott with the RBI on his seventh double of the season. He's got 19 now in the RBI department. Now the infield's going to move in. A little more than uh, halfway and maybe creep in a little more in the pitch. Here's Reynolds. And Mark will take the pitch down low for a ball. Hoshaver in trouble here in the fourth inning. Two doubles, a single, and a walk. Orioles with two runs in. Here's the 1 0 delivery. And that's outside and just gloved in the webbing by Trainer. And that was Ochaver's turn to labor. Much better situation pitch count wise. Only 44, but having a difficult inning to try to get off the ropes. Here's the 2 0 delivery. And that is going to get away. And Waiters is going to cross. And the Orioles have a 3 0 lead on the wild pitch. Take a look at this last pitch. Trainer behind the plate is unable to block it. Trainer had gone down on a couple of those trying to, trying to hold that ball in. That is the first wild pitch by Hoshaver of the season. And the Orioles now have a runner at third base. The infield is still going to stay in. Reynolds with a 3 0 is taking, and he's on. So two walks in the ball game by Hoshaver, and they come within the last three batters. And that will bring a visit to the mound by Bob McClure, the pitching coach. And he has really labored here in the fourth. Only the one pitch out to Guerrero, which drove in a run. Seems like everybody else is along at bat. O'Shaver making his 80th career appearance and his 76th start. I was talking with Mike about this before the game. We were saying O'Shaver came on. I mean, as a big time pick, uh, number one guy. They really were looking to be the anchor of a staff. Yet he's just 22 and 36 in his career. He really rushed through the minor leagues first year in Kansas City in 08. He was the uh, first round pick in 06. And 6 and 12. With a high ERA about five and a half. Went back down to the minor leagues. Dominated. Went five and one. Back up to Kansas City. Went seven and 13 with almost a seven. And that ball's going to be a base hit into center field by Hardy. That will bring on Scott. On his way to third Reynolds. Here's the throw. It gets deflected off the glove of Escobar. And Hardy delivers on the first pitch he sees. And it's four to nothing O's. Yeah, another poor breaking ball up into the middle of the play to just a spinner, much like the one he threw to Luke Scott. And then major league hitters are just not going to miss that pitch. And our Jeep Expo brought to you by the 2011 Jeep Compass. Fortunately for Kansas City, that ball did not get too far away. So Hardy's having a big series. Runners at first and third, still only one away. And the pitch is high and away on a high slider that was moving. Hardy now has picked up his 12th run batted in. 
And he's got three hits in five at bats in the two games. There's Hardy at first. Reynolds moved over to third base, first and third. Adams grounded out his first time up. That's outside. Hoshaver just seemingly has suddenly lost everything. That really has lost the release points. He's working up a pretty good lather. Trying to take a, a break, step back. Listen, you can cruise along a game, and then all of a sudden, you know, pitch counts like this. Seven in the first, just cruise to the first and second, just 18, 22 already here in the fourth. That's the thing. You, you kind of lose track of what you throw or, you know, what's the sequence of pitches. And he's not even close. There is no action in the bullpen. And that's the thing. You've already spent your one visit, so you make the manager very nervous when you don't really see any adjustment. And Yost in the middle. You just can tell he's going, what is going on? What happened? And he just looks like all of a sudden a tired pitcher. Taken 3 and 0, and he walked him on four straight. Three walks all in this inning. Many times that's why a manager or pitching coach doesn't like to make a visit with one out. They like to wait till two outs. Then you have some flexibility. Again, you've already spent your visit, though. He probably have no choice but get someone up. And nobody throwing yet. They are loosening up, so Hoshaver's got to bear the weight here for a while. Reynolds a walk at third, Hardy a single at second, Adams a walk at first. And Felix P.A. Good numbers with the bases loaded. P.A. has struck out and grounded out. That'll be a base hit in the left field. Gordon's got a great arm. One run will score as Reynolds crosses, and it is a 5 nothing lead as the Orioles jumping on Hoshaver. Yeah, nothing fancy. Everything bell tied down the middle but in about the last 15 pitches, and they're just teeing off. Well, the Orioles have already batted around. Reynolds scoring on the PA base hit, and there's still only one out for PA. That'll be RBI number four. And the bases remain loaded. Adam Jones started this out with a double. To head of getting ready in the bullpen. Orioles now with five runs on seven hits. Infield double play depth. Jones will take the pitch outside for a ball. And I think it's fair to say at this point that Ochaver stuff the first time he faced Adam Jones this inning is probably not as good as then. And he had a terrific at bat. Well, the Orioles really putting on an offensive show here in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Hoshaver 1 0 to Jones, and that's outside, and Trainer had to stop it. Again, he just looks like he's out of gas. Wow. Coming off a ball game where, as we said, he pitched so well with the eight and two thirds innings performance against Texas. Jake Arrieta doesn't mind waiting. Well, you'll wait the for runs. Come in. Yeah, you'll wait for runs. 2-0 count, one down. Sacks full. That's outside. No place to put him. 3-0. Oh. Wow. This is Adam's first chance with the bases loaded this year. One of the most O'Shea was walked in a game is four. And that was against the Twins in an outing where he went into the seventh. He has already walked three all in this inning. Two of them have already scored. 3 0 pitch taken all the way. It is in there for a strike. Gun goes to three and one on Adam. And as Mike Showalter sees his ball club come alive offensively. Here's the three one pitch. Jones will foul it straight back three and two. And Yost, the skipper, waiting for his bullpen to be ready or hoping that 
Maybe Hoshaver can get a ground ball. He was getting ground balls up until yeah, this inning. Everything just went to Bell tie about halfway through this inning, or really in the beginning of this inning. 3 2 delivery. That's going to be up the middle. That's going to be a base hit. That's going to score two. Hardy and Adams will cross a two RBI single and a 7 0 Orioles lead. Said Adam Jones having a real good inning. <laughs> Season I seven runs in this inning. It's not over yet. Again, everything bell tied. Seven runs on eight hits for the Orioles. Adam Jones right now is just torrid here in the month of May. He's got 28 RBIs. And Nick Marquez, he had a single. He has scored a run. And he will pop that one up behind the mound. Escobar shortstop. And he's got it. Now there is the second out of the inning. First one recorded by Guerrero who actually got an RBI and a ground ball out. And he's coming to the plate again. <laughs> and believe me with the ribbing that goes on in a. Major League dugout. He does not want to make two outs in this inning. It's one of those things you'll hear about for a while. Mariette has to worry about getting stiff while he's waiting. Uh oh. The 12th batter to come up for the Orioles, Vladimir Guerrero, sees a little heat up and in. Take a look at the fastball. It's under it. Let me see. That's why they call it chin music. Runners off first and third. Vladdy will go to short. Escobar throws it away. And a run will score. Escobar throw it over the head of Getz. And the Orioles add another. It is 8 nothing. It is headed for center field. Backhanded flip. Well out of the reach of second baseman Chris Getz. Not one of the more memorable innings for the Kansas City defense. So Jones is safe at second base. I think Escobar only committed two errors and a ton of chances. He's the number one fielding shortstop in the American League. The error will extend the inning. There's Escobar. I mean that just was to nobody. Matt Wieters will take it inside for a ball. An eight run fourth inning. I think Hochaber totally frustrated. Last pitch 95. I think he's just got to the point where I'm just going to air it out in the middle of the plate and let's see what happens. If he can get it in there. He, <laughs> he falls behind on Wieters 2 0. Oh. I mean, that's the thing. He's only thrown pitches in the 60s. It seems like he's thrown 140 this inning. RBIs picked up by a PA and Guerrero and Jones and Scott and Hardy. And that pitch misses and the count goes to 3 and 0. Oh. Bullpen is ready. As Tejeda's right now just staying warm out there. Two out runner in scoring position numbers. Matt Weeder second only to Julio Borbone in that department. Takes the pitch on the inside corner and it is three and one. Thirteen batters to the plate so far. Weeders drew a walk scored in the inning. He's also hit into a double play. Jones and Guerrero the base runners. Goes to first. Hosmer's got it. And that will retire the side. But the Orioles come away with eight runs on six hits, and Arietta's got an eight nothing lead.
Baseball on Masson brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Go to southwest.com. Grab your bag. It's on. A lot of folks will be taking uh, tours of the Pride of Baltimore, the Inner Harbor, with the uh, Memorial Day weekend coming up. A lot of people around already who clearly are uh, doing some visiting in the city. Well, Jake Arietta has been the fish beneficiary of a lot of runs this year. He's one of the leaders in the American League as far as run support is concerned. And the Orioles certainly did a job for him in that uh, fourth inning as it is now 8 nothing. And for Drew Koshaver, it's, it's like, what happened? That's, that's what you look like after an eight-run inning. Just to, again, look like he's been in a fight. So Arietta will try and heat up here and throw some strikes. Gets Escobar in the top of the order. Gordon gets to a walk his first time up. Here's the 1 0 delivery, and that's going to be way up high, and the count will go to 2 0. That's the thing, you know, with getting all those runs, I don't know how long it took, but it seemed like it was a half an hour. It's a long time to sit over on the bench. Here's the 2 0 delivery, and that's going to miss inside, and he starts up. He starts out 3 0. You see the run support numbers in the American League with Hellickson on top, Sabathia, Tomlin, and then Arietta at 6.7 runs a ball game. Max Scherzer of Detroit fifth. Walked him on four straight pitches. And that oh is uh, certainly, my. yeah, that is certainly rust. That'll send Weeders out. While he does that, let's take a look at the state in baseball history brought to you by Verizon Fios. Switch to Fios, a network ahead to learn more. Visit Verizon.com slash get Fios. May 25, 1923. Ty Cobb scoring the run that would put him past Honus Wagner for the most all time. 1935, Babe Ruth, three home runs, the last three he would hit. 714 playing with the Boston Braves. And Mike Reynolds in 07 batted cleanup for the first time. Went five for five and a home run for Arizona. There's Mark right there. Cleanup. And a big night. He just missed the cycle. He ended up missing a double. Here's Escobar, runner at first base. And they're just going to take now. They need base runners. Marietta can't find the strike zone. Now again, he, he's clearly has stiffened up from that long way. You see him stretching his arm, doing a lot of bending. A lot of times when you when you have a long inning like that, you'll try to get back out to the mound early and maybe get a few extra warm-up pitches. A couple of notes on our this state in baseball. How about the baseball? The last home run hit by Babe Ruth. It's kind of amazing. We were looking at that. He was 40 years old and he hit the longest home run ever hit at Forbes Field. That was your last game. one yeah. as a 40 year old. And, and the baseball was found. And the ball went out into a construction lot and uh, Wiggy Diorio retrieved the ball, brought it to the, uh, the Shelony Hotel, and had Babe Ruth autograph it. How about that? And this more. Here's the 2 0 delivery. And we're still trying to figure out the rest of the story as we go along. As Paul Harvey would have said. <laughs> yeah. The rest of the story appears to be that that baseball is now at the Hall of Fame. That the ball was actually uh, given by the family of the youngster that found it. In the, in the year that Ruth died. Yeah. 1948. 13 years after his last home run when he passed away. Yeah. Babe Ruth passed away on August 16th, 1948. When he was 53, and we found out that it was donated later that year. Yep. So the ball's at the Hall of Fame. Could write a whole book on the one baseball of his travels. Home run number 714. Actually, we were laughing. They had a quote from Guy Bush who gave up the last home run. He said, Babe Ruth, he was fat and he was old, but he could still swing. 2-2 <laughs> two -two delivery. Ground ball, second base, not hit hard. Adams is going to go to first base to make sure. Gets will move up. Escobar is retired. We're tired about that. I mean, legends are legends for a reason. You do things like that. It's like Williams hitting his last home run, circling the bases, running into the dugout. And never right coming back out. Went right up to the clubhouse and never played again. And went fishing. And I think they finished the last two weeks of yep. the season. Uh, the Red Sox went on the road. He said that's it. He hit it at Fenway. Here's Ruth, 40 years old. Last home run's the longest home run ever hit at Forbes Field. I mean, there were some big-time home run hitters that played in that ballpark. 
Pitch will be taken for a strike. Gordon delivered a double his last time up. He has also struck out. A runner at second base, one down. Only two hits surrendered by Arietta, even though he's thrown 83 pitches with three walks and five strikeouts in the ballgame. Gordon's double and Butler's single are the only hits. Foul ball. Also in that number in 1923 when Ty Cobb passed Honus Wagner for the most runs scored, that record in 1923 was not bested until 2001 when Ricky Henderson hmm. broke the record that had been set by Ty Cobb. Runner at second base gets Arietta with an 0 2 count. And again, fouled off outside of first. For the sake of announcers showing up on time, we again remind you it's an afternoon game tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> It'll start first pitch at 1235. And if everybody's in the booth, we'll actually have that covered for you. It'll be uh, Jeremy Guthrie against Jeff Francis. <laughs> <laughs> they don't need the announcers, but if Mike's not in or on camera, we've got deep problems. <laughs> 0 2 count on Gordon. And he went around. at six strikeouts for Arietta. Well, he's appeared to loosen back up, took a few pitches, but now appears to be back on track. 0 2 pitch lets it go. So the velocity is down. That is 89 to mile hour fastball. But clearly that long inning taking the stove, but you know what? I'll take the I'll take the snowman in the bottom of the four. Yep. Two away. Runner remains at second base. Here's Cabrera, who has reached on an error and sacrificed. Two down, gets it second. And the pitch is away. We wondered whether Arietta might be the Orioles pitcher who's left the most runners on base since he seems to always pitch that way. There's really not much difference. Coming into the night, Britain had left 41, Guthrie 40, Arietta had left 38, and Tillman 35. So pretty even for the Orioles starters in that department. One ball, one strike count with two away. Cabrera's numbers with runners in scoring position. Switch hitters, 254 right, 285 left handed. Five home runs, three of them from this side of the plate. One one delivery. Foul back. Yeah, we're going to go through now and maybe change some of the numbers to figure out who has the club lead in RBIs and what going on in that eight run fourth. It's a ball game where we were looking really to see some home runs because Arietta, Mike mentioned, has given up a home run in each of his last six starts. While Luke Hoshaver has given up 13 of them tied for most in the American League. But despite those numbers the runs have not come via the long ball. Walk singles and doubles the order of the day. And a one ball two strike count. Very little breeze. Last night. And tonight, very still summer like evening, 83 degrees when we started. Here's the 1 2 delivery, and that in the air to right field. No center said than done. Goodbye, home run. Cabrera gets a two RBI shot, and Kansas City gets on the board. It is an 8 2 ball game. Sorry I brought it up. No, actually, the good thing is he's only allowed one in all of those starts. Sixth home run of the year for Cabrera. Golf this breaking ball. No doubt about it. Nobody really moves. You see him get the bad head out, short and quick to the ball. Cabrera's having a nice year for the Royals. Well struck. So a two out homer. And an eight to two lead on the third hit of the ball game. And Cabrera's first hit off Arietta. And here is Hosmer, and he'll ground it to second base. Adams is up with it and gets the out. So a couple of runs, one hit, no errors, and nobody left on the base. The Babe!
Gary Thorne, Mike Flanagan. Mike, uh, from a pitcher's perspective on Luke Koshaver, what happens when you've rolled along so well and then comes an inning like that? I've had it happen to be before. We're all sudden, I think the most they ever threw in an inning was around 30, uh, which I happened a lot. But anyways, he got up around 40, and I really, once you get to that point, you don't know what the right pitch is anymore. You don't know what your release point is anymore. You've lost all sequence to pitching, and it really just becomes throwing, and you're just hoping somebody lines out. And the Oriole hitters, obviously, knowing that, started going after those first ball pitchers, knowing he was going to start aiming. Yeah, he started aiming for the middle of the plate, missed badly, walked a couple, and the adjustment to that is back down the middle, and they were there waiting. They had a big inning, and uh, he's going to give it a whirl. They're not going to go to the bullpen here. And here is Luke Scott. O'Shaver will stay out, and he didn't get a lot of rest after that long inning either. Pitch is taken away. Take a look at our cores like cold, hard blast. Luke Scott, he got into that one. Scott with the double, the RBI, part of that big fourth inning. He'll foul that one off. Our cold hard blast brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light. Yeah, and I'll guarantee you Luke Hochaver has no idea what he threw Luke Scott last time up or throughout most of that inning. But the thing is, this is a fresh round. You know, he got off the ropes. We'll see what the adjustment he can make. Scott will take the pitch, just misses. And now his focus is just to getting outs for his manager and his club and not try to run through the through the bullpen again with that 1230 game. It's like a half a day's rest. It's not even a normal's rest normal rest. Two one delivery and a strike called. I mean, Luke Scott had been 0 for 90 and so Javers two for two tonight. So it's like go figure. At the bottom of the order coming into the night Scott Reynolds and Hardy had been one for 23 against Ho Chaver. They've been on base. They can even add it all up. That's six times. <laughs> Glad he's the only one who did not score in that last half inning, but to get an RBI. Second base on a turnover and uh, gets. We'll get the out. And there's one away. Gather up your group and enjoy a great night or day here at the ballpark at the Miller Lite Flight Deck. One low price, casual atmosphere, bar like seating. Everybody gets a food and beverage voucher you can use anywhere in the yard. There are individual tickets available for select games. Find out more about the Miller Lite Flight Deck. 888 for a to go to Orioles.com. Reynolds drew a walk, scored in the big fourth inning. He's uh, 0 for 1 officially in the ball game. The Orioles have the 8 to 2 lead out hitting the Royals 8 3. Towering pop up. Second base. Maybe first. Nope. Gets has got it. Talking about the middle of the lineup that had been hitting so well and the others not. Buck Showalter and I wired Wednesday said this before the game about that. Is it half full or half empty? You know, you're not ever going to get nine guys clicking offensively, even though that's what we strive for. You always strive for perfection. You try to pass the baton along. Little by little, our guys are creeping up to, to their track record. We knew that was going to happen. We want everything to happen now, overnight. And, and believe me, no more than me and, and Jim Presley. But, uh, uh, you know, very quietly, I think our guys are edging up. And um, But we've still got to do better offensively. But we're facing good pitching in the major league. It's called the major league, whether it's American League East or whoever. It's part of the equation. And, uh, you know, last night we beat a good guy. And I was proud of that. You know, if you're waiting around for fourth and fifth starters and, and middle-tier relievers, uh, those guys aren't usually uh, playing when uh, the leaves are getting brown and uh, it's getting a little cooler in October. Talking about, of course, uh, Joaquin Soria, whom the Orioles beat. Not only beat him, but first time they got in a run off him. That one down to third base. Big hop for Betterman by Hardy. And uh, how about that? Comes right back after that disastrous inning and retires the side in order. Frank Gore will lead it off coming back.
Alon Masson is brought to you by AT&T, Rethink Possible, and by Blimping, America's sub shop. Biggest offensive inning of the year for the Orioles with the eight runs in that fourth inning and an eight to two lead as we go to the top of the six. Frank Core, Butler, and Betterman coming up. Arietta with three walks and six strikeouts in the ball game after his sixth win of the year. He is five and two. And foul back by Francoeur. For Arietta, it's about the pitch count here in this game as to how long he stays. It really got up on him early, and Simone's up in the bullpen already. I'm afraid if Simone got the win in the game last night coming into work in inning. 94th pitch will be driven to right field. Nick Marcakis will get over and make the catch. Frank White on hand here broadcasting for the Royals. It was in this state in 1988. He became the first player in franchise history to play 2,000 games as a Royal. 18 years with the Royals. Only George Brett played more for them. Paul Splitorf, who passed away, a very good friend of his, and we talked to Frank before the game. When you're talking about Paul, you're talking about a guy who was just a classic guy, a guy who took his work seriously in baseball and in broadcasting. And as a young player coming to Kansas City, he was one of the guys that, you know, I, I talked to a little bit about hit. You know, he talked to me about hitting, and I talked to him about pitching. And but as a rookie, you, you find out how intense he was when he actually competed. And he was a guy that really prepared hard, uh, and he just carried that, you know, off the field too. Thinking good people in the game. There's another one of them right there. Yeah, he's right at the top. Quality individual. He was a great player. Great second baseman. And lost a great friend for those who joined us late here. Paul Splitorf, the former pitcher and broadcaster for Kansas City, passed away this morning. And so it's been a long day for the Royals. One ball, one strike count. And Butler, he can hit. So he's perfect in the ball game. A walk and two singles. Butler on with one away here in the sixth inning. Tell you how close the split our family was with the team and the ball club. The family announced funeral arrangements today and they're going to wait. They're going to wait for the team to get home and have the visiting hours next Monday when there's a day game and have the funeral on Tuesday during the day when the players and everybody can go because the ball players in front office and people traveling with the team were really worried they were not going to be able to get back to recognize Paul Splitorf at the funeral arrangements. And uh, the family has taken care of that for them. That is swung on and missed. So happy we uh, I got to see Paul in Kansas City. He was still working. When the Orioles went there, he was down on the field. He was doing a pre and post. It did not look good. Melanoma is uh, what took his life. He battled it for over a year. Wilson Betterman at 0 1 count. And he'll go to third under the glove of Reynolds. And a base hit. PA will get it back in, and Betterman's on first and second with one away. Well, Rose continued to, to peck away. Now the uh, sixth base hit, just out of the reach of Reynolds at third. So five hits in the ballgame. Only one away, and here comes Matt Trainer, who has struck out and hit into a double play. How hard to stay focused when you got an eight-nothing lead when you're the pitcher? Well, you, you, you got to guard against changing your your game plan. All of a sudden, you go now you go from getting them out to maybe conserving pitches, throwing strikes, not walking anybody. And sometimes you can lose focus and you become more compromising. Say, well, it's two and zero. Oh, I don't want to walk anybody, so I throw it down the middle. And that's a base hit, you know, and that can work against you. So there's kind of a fine line. There, there were some pretty good oil pitchers that could pitch with leads. Mike Boddicker was one. If he had a six nothing lead, you weren't getting any more. He didn't change his plan at all. Others were more compromising. It may give you a run or two in swapping off outs for big innings. Yep. And that pitch will be taken for a strike, which is one of the reasons uh, I did not agree with the uh, Cy Young Award winner. I think some pitchers may not have the ERA that's lower. I want to see how many games they won and how many games the team won when they started. Yeah. And for that reason, the ERA may be a little higher if they get in games where they're willing to surrender a run or two or maybe even three as they change the, the plan of the game. Marikakis trainers retired. Runner will tag and move over to third base. Butler goes to third. Betterman stays at first. 
No, I think you're exactly right. I think, you know, pitching with a lead, I mean, there's guys that are compromising. One of the years that I was a pitching coach here, Messina was here. Uh, he ended up winning 19, 19 games, and that year we really worked on pitching deeper in the games, maybe compromising pitch counts, maybe compromising ERA a little bit in those games with a lead to pitch deeper in the ball games, and he had a terrific year. But you're right, I, I still, wins still have to count. I know today everybody's talking about, well, you know, go with the overall stats and hits per innings pitched and walk to strikeouts and whip, and there's a lot of things involved. There's still something to be said, but. Yep. The other side of the argument is we play for the Yankees and you win 20. Is it the same winning 13 for Seattle? In the end, there better be only one reason you hmm. play these games. <laughs> to win. Exactly. Arietta's got two down. Runners on at first and third. Gets through a walk. Scored in the fifth inning on the homer by Cabrera. The 0-1 delivery to him. Arietta gets it in for a strike. And he goes up 0 and 2. Yeah, yes, I think back to Steve Carlton where he went 27 for a team that won maybe won half their games. Yeah. O2 the count. Kansas City had early chances against Arietta, leaving runners on in the first three. Nonsense. Did he go? Yep. Arietta's got seven strikeouts in the ball game. Gets retired. No runs. Couple of hits. Two are left on. The Orioles have the 8-2 lead. Weeknights on Mass and latest news, Nationals, Orioles, and MLB. To get reports on the field, join uh, Tom Davis, Mel Antonin, Phil Wood, Amber Theo Harris tomorrow, 5.30 to 7, as they discuss all that's going on around Major League Baseball and about the O's Royals series finale. And a called strike on the outside corner. Brian Adams drew a walk, scored in the fourth inning. He is grounded out. Luko Shaver had been getting everything on the ground. And then the Orioles started getting some base hits. First out that came on a ball in the air. And it was on a pop out by Marquecas in that fourth inning. And uh, then he went right back to the ground balls again. 0 2 delivery, and that will miss outside. One ball, two strike count on Adams. Not sure he feels like that uh, fourth inning. It was a different game or a different day. And the other innings, he's been pretty good. One, two delivery. Adams will chop that one foul. Brian coming up for his debut on uh, Friday. He's having a great season with the Tides, hitting 303 in the 39 games he played there. All star last year in the Eastern League of Bowie. There he uh, had a record for the Bay Sox with 43 doubles. Towards the middle, it'll be cut off. Escobar makes the play. One away in the sixth inning. We also talked about the Royals and their home record. 
17 and 13 at home now just 5 and 12 on the road. So at some point they're going to have to have a couple of long road trips. 30 home games and 17 on the road only 17 on the road so far. Yeah they are in. Uh, in trouble when it comes to the road games. Breaking ball is going to be taken inside by P.A. He got an RBI single. In his last at bat. And is one for three. In the ball game. And will foul that one back. One ball one strike count on P.A. One ball one strike count. Bo Shaver. In the air to right field. Frank Core. He's got it. And there are two down. And uh, we want to welcome you to our Coors Light sixth inning. Time for our Coors Light freeze cam. Adam Jones fourth inning. Wacko. All right up the middle of that scoreboard. A double and two RBIs. A double and two RBIs in the inning along with a single. So he had one big inning. <laughs> with two hits. And two runs batted in. Coors Light Freeze Camp brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Light. And here's Adam again. That swung on a foul back. Got a piece of uh, trainer. I thought they made contact. Oh. Sorry about the bat swing. I guess Adam's making the transition from uh, bubble gum to sunflower seeds. Apparently. Yeah. And a change of plan. Oh, on delivery down to third. Not of a nice pick. And gets it. So Jones retired. And amazingly, after that tough hitting, seven in a row have been retired by the KC starter. Big night, double down their right field line. Here it's PA adding on Adam Jones, another big night, two hits in the same inning. And for the Royals, their only sort of hope in this has been Melky Cabrera, two run home run to cut two into the deficit. Larry does a nice job with a couple of long innings off the ropes. So Larry had a six innings, five hits, two runs, three walks, seven Ks, fought his way through an eight run inning, a big inning. Season high in the fourth, and eight different players scored a run in that fourth inning. So, coming production from top to bottom, and Arietta really gutting it out and pitching uh, real well. The result looks real good. Arietta's out of there. Jim Johnson has come out of the bullpen. Arietta will wait to see if he gets his sixth win as the bullpen takes over. Escobar leading it off. There's Arietta getting the congratulations. <laughs> He's saying it was work, wasn't it, young man? <laughs> Mike yes, Connor, right. the pitching coach, fouled off, just missed. Yeah, Jimmy Johnson didn't work in yesterday's game. 22nd appearance on the year. That ERA just keeps.
coming down with a three and one record overall. Pitched in both Saturday and Sunday back to back outings against the Nationals and was uh, outstanding in those. Again, outstanding stuff, top shelf stuff. Escobar reaching, fouls it back. Seventh inning. Orioles up by a score of eight to two after winning the opener five three in a dramatic bottom of the ninth inning comeback. Orioles win last night, first time they've won a ball game when they have trailed after eight innings. And the first walk off home run this year. Adam Jones getting it. He wouldn't bite on that one. And a one ball, two strike count. Well, Buck Showalter may use that same formula where it's the Nationals back to back. He used Jimmy Johnson and then Koji. And then three innings to take off the board. The longest Jimmy Johnson has pitched this year is two innings. That'll go to Hardy. One away. Take a look at our AT&T Mobility hey, Trivia hey, hey, Facts. Adam Jones, month of May has been very good to him. 369. And the Orioles record for May is held by Roberto Alomar who hit 421 in the month of May 1996. I really thought he was going to hit 400 that year. He made it look so easy. But I think when you know, we get to June, you just call it May 35th and May exactly. 42nd. Exactly. Just it's the same way you tell time. I yeah. ask you, what time are we doing this? You 10:10 uh, <laughs> or at 7:38? <laughs> Somewhere around there. Well, tomorrow's game is you know we should be here by 11:30, you know quarter one, and we'll be fine. <laughs> Here's Alex Gordon. <laughs> he takes it for a strike. How many alarms do I have to set tonight? That's the question. <laughs> Gordon Back. doubled in the third, one for three. <laughs> he struck out twice. Perhaps I can get the ice cream shop downstairs to call me. Do that, or they you, know me you personally. Leave one of those soft shell crabs <laughs> by your bed, and that'll wake you up. <laughs> hey, one ball, two strike count on Gordon. Or you can get a rooster, you know. <laughs> <laughs> And swung on and missed. Johnson gets the strikeout. Obviously watching the game because Gordon has been chasing that pitch. Yeah, supposed to be in. Ends up up and away. But just with that outstanding velocity, they've gone by Gordon a couple of times up. Here is Cabrera who delivered the long ball, his sixth home run in the fifth inning, accounting for the two runs that have been put up by the Royals. And that's going to be fouled back. Accounting for all the offense. Two run home run in the fifth. Always had uh, good success here at Camden Yard. 316, a couple of home runs, 13 RBIs, much to the dismay of Jake Arrieta. Jim Johnson gets a tapper and no play. That'll be a base hit. Reynolds diving and actually hit the end of his glove. PA will get it in. And uh, Cabrera will be credited with a single. Hope well, you'll join us again tomorrow. The finale, Jeremy Guthrie on the mound against Jeff Francis, another left-hander. Our coverage on Mass and HD begins at noon with those extra presented by Verizon 4G LTE, followed by game coverage at 12.30. All the access you need right here on Mass. Here's Eric Cosmer. Osmer will top that one off the mask of Weeders. He's had an 0 for 3 fly ball, struck out, and has grounded out. One strike count with a runner on at first base. A lot of talk about how tight the American League is. Saw a note today that uh, right now the Cleveland Indians are the only team in the American League on pace to win 100 games. They've they're a pace for 108, not likely, but there's no other team on a pace for over 88 wins in the entire American League. Like Joe Walter saying, keep it tight. Stay right in that grouping. Gives the Orioles a shot. That'll be a base hit into right field. So Hosmer delivers. And with two down, two on. Now this offense will keep picking away. Able to put runs on the board a lot of different ways. Again, what are they, third in the league in hitting? They have seven hits in the ball game, only uh, one shy of what the Orioles have. The Orioles have the eight runs. 
Here is Jeff Francoeur. He's taken an 0 for 3. A couple of hits and 8 at bats so far in the series. And he'll take the pitch for a strike. Orioles coming in 22 and 24. They are three and a half games. Only three and a half games. Three in the loss column. Behind the leader in the American League East. New York won today. They've got 27 wins. Red Sox won today. They've got 27 wins. Virtual tie for first. Then Tampa Bay. Toronto and the Orioles. Now Tampa rained out. Toronto beaten by New York. The Yankees got a 7 to 3 win in their ball game today. Garcia over Reyes. A big day for Teixeira. A couple of RBIs. And Andrew Jones had four RBIs and two home runs for the Yankees. He's coming off the bench and just kind of giving guys rest. They got two home runs from Jones, one from uh, Teixeira in the game. And they beat. Toronto seven to three, and no, Batista did not have another home run. <laughs> Two ball, one strike count on Francoeur. Runners off first and second, and a shattered bat to short. Hardy will go to first and gets the out. No runs, two hits, no errors, two left. Seventh inning stretch time at Camden Yards. Orioles up by six. Power of engineering. Back here at Camden Yards, Gary Thorne, Mike Flanagan, the Orioles with a big uh, explosive inning and a victory here. And this Buckshaw likes to talk about winning those series is what it's all about. Yeah, you love winning two out of three all the time. So nothing like getting the first two in the books and you have a chance to go for the sweep tomorrow. This one's not over yet, but it's looking pretty good. And again, the offense has done a nice job. Starting pitching has been good. And O'Shaver, after the big inning with the eight runs, retires seven in a row. Go may, figure. Yeah, we may have to look up some, who's given up the most runs in one inning and pitched a complete game. His pitch count's still decent. Yeah, he, uh, he threw very little in the first three, four innings, three innings, then came to the fourth when the Orioles sent 13 to the plate against him and then settled back down. If you could explain that, <laughs> you could make a lot of money. If you could even ask him, what were you thinking in the one inning and what were you thinking in the other five? Just amazing. And he's still out there, so... He is saving his ball club from having to go to the uh, bullpen not only early but even a little later in this ball game as we go to the bottom half of the seventh inning. But Joe Alders club has come up big here. Take Marikagas off his foot. Marikagas one for three. Ten game hit streak. He has popped out singled. And grounded out. Nick part of that big eight run six hit fourth inning. Here's the one one delivery down to first base. Hosmer is there. One away. Orioles trying to win their fourth in a row. That would equal the longest win streak that the Orioles have this season and trying to send Kansas City to their fourth loss in a row. These two teams uh, are two and two against one another. So far this season. The Orioles other four game win streak was actually the very start of the year. Here's Vladimir Guerrero and he will take the pitch away. Two pretty good DHs in this ball game and Billy Butler and Vladimir Guerrero. There's where they rank in DH numbers. Average two and three home runs 14th and fourth. 
The RBIs are up there for both of them as they are ninth and fifth and then slugging percentage fifth and fourth. So these are two of the best. Butler of Kansas City and Vladimir Guerrero for the Orioles. And that will be fouled off. Oh, Doggy Willie, you haven't lost the magic in the glove. Willie Randolph hauls it in. <laughs> and then the fan missed it. And then the fan now missed it. Figures. Now I have to go get it again. And my hand won't stop hurting. Willie's down there for John Russell. His knees have been acting up on him. So John's staying in the dugout and Willie Randolph the bench coach coaching at third base. I can see a little smile on his face getting a little bit of razzing from that Kansas City dugout. Here's the 2 1 delivery and that'll go to short. Escobar. And there are two down. You can entertain clients colleagues and uh, anyone you'd like in one of the custom suite packages here at Camden Yards private suites available variety of locations and offer packages for you find out more go to Orioles.com slash suites or you can have a private tour by calling 410 547 6076. Matt Wieters watch scored he has doubled and ground uh, into a double play and is grounded out as well so officially 0 for 2. Matt hitting at 269 and it towards the seats, and it's a foul ball. Yeah, Matt Wieters having an amazing year with runners on and with nobody on. The difference, of course, you'd rather have it that way. 269 overall, but he's hitting 184 with nobody on base. With runners on base, he's had 56 at bats and he's hitting 411. Protects on that one. Another one of those. You just. Can't explain. You know, now he's, he's almost getting the. Uh, I don't know. Clubs are aware that he has these kind of a numbers, and, and then you become defensive as a pitcher. It's really, is amazing how it works. O2 deliveries right off the end of the bat. O Shaver. Putting a little movement on that one, and a two-strike count from him on Weeders. <laughs> he's still in real good shape, pitch count-wise. As Ned Yost is going to kick back. 97 pitches thrown by Ho Shaver. He went eight and two thirds last time out through 113. He may go another inning. Just a couple more left in him. 27 year old right hander. Orioles trying to beat him for the fourth time in five starts. 0 2 delivery. Jandy. Silo shot. Trainer. And no play. 15,740. 15,740. The announced attendance here at Camden Yards tonight. And uh, seeing the Orioles put on their biggest offensive inning of the year in the eight run fourth. Orioles have stranded only three on base in the ball game and only one in scoring position. They've taken the chances, driven them home, literally. Joe Walters ball club continues up there with the second best average with runners in scoring position and waiters will not go after that pitch and the two ball two strike count. Two two delivery. Good eye. Waiters refusing to help him and the Orioles. Matt Wieters takes it to 3 2 with two down. And he will foul that one away. Orioles get another left hander tomorrow. They are 5 and 9 against left handed starters now. That is 29th in the majors and last in the American League in win percentage against lefties. And that's going to be stopped. Hosmer got it. Ho Shaver will cover in a real nice play. One, two, three inning. We've completed seven at Camden Yards. Eight, two O's.
Team player of the game, the choices tonight. Adam Jones has had a couple of hits, two RBIs, and a run scored. Jake Arrieta, a very solid six innings, couple of runs on five hits. And Luke Scott, who has delivered a RBI double and scored a run in the fourth inning. Text in your vote, A, B, or C to 51862. Jim Johnson on the mound, couple of singles against him in the seventh. But he left him on base. Billy Butler, two singles and a walk tonight for the designated hitter. And that is taken down low. You see Andino talking about fielding with Willie Randolph, how to get that ball into the stands so the fans can handle it. Willie responding, well, he did that. Andino said, well, you threw it wrong. This is right. This is how I used to. Let me coach you. Let me coach you on that. <laughs> you can do that when you're ahead 8 to 2. Yes, yeah, 8 Browns brings a lot of smiles. <laughs> And Butler will take the pitch. Johnson will fall behind him 3 0. Kansas City with eight left on base. Their chance, best chances to get it to Arietta came in the first three innings. They couldn't get the big hits. And then the Orioles' fourth inning put them way out in front. And Kansas City has had the homer by Cabrera to get their two runs on the board. And uh, Reynolds going to have to make a good play on this. And does. Had time with Butler running, gets the out, one away, eighth inning. Follow the Orioles with MLB.com at bat 2011 app for your iPhone, iPad, Android, or Blackberry. Scores, highlights. You can get pitch by pitch tracking. Just text at bat 31826 or go to Orioles.com for info. Jim Johnson coming in, left handers 200 against him. The right handers 316. Again, the numbers that don't match up to the old book we talk about. And a 1 0 count on Wilson Betterman. Betterman is a single. He has struck out and popped out. And that pitch is in there for a strike, 1 1. Johnson's 1 1 delivery to Betterment will be taken away. Looks like Ho Shavers completed his work. He hung in there after the big inning. Well, there haven't been many low pressure relief appearances on this home stand when you think about it. 2 1 delivery on the way will be fouled away. <laughs> Orioles finish up. The homestand tomorrow. They head out to Oakland for the Memorial Day weekend. They'll get another left hander to open that series up. Chris Tillman against Gio Gonzalez, Brad Bergeson, Josh Outman, Zach Britton, and Guillermo Mosoko, who made his first start last night. And got him. Foul tipped into the mitt. Metamet retired. Johnson 2Ks. He did a 2 2 pitch, bottom just right out from underneath. 95 mile an hour power sinker. Two down in the eighth. Matt Trainer, the catcher, coming up, struck out it into a double play and has fouled out. <laughs> Former Oriole Eric Bedard got a win today against Minnesota. Seattle beat Minnesota 3-0. League came on for his 12th save. The Darts three and four. Grounded towards second base. Play made by Adams. Good inning for Johnson. He sets him down one, two, three. The Orioles with an eight to two lead. Scott Reynolds and Hardy coming up.
telecast presented by authority of the Orioles may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Orioles. Gorgeous night here at Camden Yards. Kind of an inexplicable night. Luke Shaver's done. They go to the bullpen, and here is Tejeda. Yeah, Robinson Tejeda recently uh, off the disabled list will make his ninth appearance on the year. Very lofty earned run average. Gets the ninth inning on Saturday versus the Cardinals. That was his first outing since way back on April 12th against Minnesota. Spent a lot of time on a disabled list with right shoulder inflammation. Made five appearances in AAA Omaha. Work his way back into the big leagues, and he's been up for a while. He's nice and warm. He was throwing for most of that fourth inning. He's always had pretty good stuff. Always had a real lively power arm, 95, 96 miles an hour. He had a really unusual game. Though the first two innings, the Orioles had two singles. They left one on base and were retired in order in the first and third. In the fourth inning, they sent 13 batters to the plate, got eight runs on six hits. After that, they were retired in order in the fifth, sixth, and seventh. Hoshaver retired 10 in a row after that inning. One inning. But that's enough, hopefully, for the Orioles. Here is Luke Scott, part of the inning with a uh, double RBI and a run scored. He has two hits in the ballgame, two for three. Sends one to short. Escobar. One away in the bottom of the eighth inning. Yeah, just a real strange inning. Just had a nice shot of it. Escobar, the shortstop, made an error in that inning. Just his third of the year. I mean, walks galore. Like I said, retires the side in order after that inning. I don't know how you're supposed to feel if you're Hochaver tomorrow. Did I pitch okay? Did I pitch? Can you relieve me great? in the fourth and then just bring yeah. me back in the fifth? What can I go and play first base for the fourth and then come back in the fifth? In the air to left field off the bat of Mark Reynolds back at the wall and goodbye home run. Mark Reynolds delivers the long ball and it is a 9 2 game. He's missed four or five on this homestand by being a little too quick and pulling them foul. This one he hits a moonshot, a lot of backspin, and just keeps carrying out. Sixth home run of the year for Reynolds. You took a look at it on our Dodge Ram Exmo, brought to you by Ram Trucks, design tested and proven to be the best trucks we've ever built. Ram. Here's J.J. Hardy. Nine runs on nine hits for the Orioles. Reynolds now has 21 runs batted in on the year. Tate is 0-2 delivery, and that's taken outside. Reynolds three home runs here and three home runs on the road and they really haven't hit many on this homestand but the majority of them been big time needed home runs that this one a little icing on the cake but you think back Adam Jones's home run walk off home run last night Vladimir's two run homer against the Nationals to win 2 1 and they had a long drought in the middle Rymold getting one against the Nationals. And foul tipped. Orioles now have 44 home runs as a ball club. They are eighth in the American League in home runs hit. They have hit 44 and given up 60. Coach O'Hara, Michael Gonzalez in the pen. 2 2 delivery to Hardy. Hardy's had a single and an RBI, a one for three ball game, three hits, six at bats in the series. JJ's always done well against the Kansas City Royals. He's got a 313 lifetime batting average against the Royals. 2 2 delivery. That jammed. <laughs> oh. 
Orioles looking to improve their mark to four and three in this homestand with a victory tonight. That's uh, going to be popped up first base. Osmer is under it and puts it away. Two down. Don't forget for every walk, Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield contributes $50 to the Living Classroom Foundation. Orioles have drawn 146 walks, $7,300. Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield encourages each of us to take the first step towards a healthier and more active lifestyle. Two down. Brian Adams, nobody on here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Adams, a walk and a run scored, 0 for 2 at the plate. The Orioles get this one tonight with a right handed starter having made it. The Orioles are. They're going to move to 18 and 15 against right handed starters. That is the third best winning percentage in the American League against right handers. Only Cleveland is better at 21 and 12 coming into today's play. The Orioles looking to go 18 and 15. The Orioles do have the largest differential in the majors between win percentage against righties and lefties. And it will be a lefty tomorrow, but they beat a lefty. That's right. Starter. In Starter the game last yeah. night. He wasn't kind of long gone by the time it happened. Yeah. But, yeah. And just missed. Goes off the catcher's glove. Just missed hitting him. Two and two. Two of his pitch from Robinson to Hayda. And right at the hands. Two ball, two strike delivery to Adams. And he'll chop that foul. Jones and Showalter. Two ball, two strike count. Yeah, two smiles going around yes. the dugout tonight. Little six run lead. And strike him out. But the Orioles will add another as Reynolds delivers his sixth home run, a solo shot. We go to the ninth inning. The Orioles three outs away from a W. Orioles baseball on mass and brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. So the Orioles looking to put one away, get their 23rd win. Michael Gonzalez comes out of the pen to try and finish it up. Well, coming out of the bullpen where he hasn't had a whole lot of success, certainly in the uh, short term. 18th appearance of the year, ERA approaching nine. 14 innings of work, 22 hits, five walks, 14 strikeouts. Last worked in that uh, 17 to 5 game against the Nationals. Gave up a couple of home runs. One to uh, Jason Worth and one to Wilson Ramos, the catcher. Again, it's been an intended season of adjustments for Gonzalez. 
And he'll get it in there for the strike. As gets the number eight hitter. Two walks and a strikeout. One run scored for him. Good job by Jim Johnson. Two innings, two hits with a couple of strikeouts. Jim Johnson now. It's the second time this year he's gone four straight appearances without allowing a run. Starter Arietta, two runs, five hits over six, three walks and seven strikeouts. Arietta would be six and two with a victory. Luke Hoshaver would go three and five. The eight runs, eight hits over seven. Here's the one two delivery to Getz, and that'll be in the dirt. And a two ball, two strike count. Escobar and then Gordon at the top of the order. Yeah, Arietta be the first starter to get the six wins. The opening day starter. He will be 2 and 0 against Kansas City with a victory. Towards the middle. Nice running play made by Ryan Adams to get the out. One down. We'll update you on our voting for the AT&T player of the game. That's what it looks like so far. You still have time to vote A, B, or C at 51862. Results on the O's Extra Post Game Show. Gonzalez gets the first out. Here's Escobar. He's had an 0 for 3 in the game and an 0 for 6 in the series. He is 3 for 16 against the Orioles. That'll be caught by Hardy on the shattered bat. Soft liner. Two down. And the bat caught by ball caught by Hardy and the bat almost caught by Reynolds at third. Great camera shot. Not sure which went higher, the ball or the bat. Fans on their feet, two down. Ninth inning, Alex Gordon. A double and three strikeouts. And the pitch will miss for a ball. Gordon, a 313 hitter off left handers. Fastball is in there. 101. Victory tonight. Day game tomorrow. The Orioles will have a chance to get back to 500. And a 1 2 count. Here's the 1 2 delivery. Gordon goes down, swinging, and that's the ball game as the Orioles will have a chance to sweep tomorrow. Arietta gets the win to go 6 and 2. Luke Shaver, the loser, 3 and 5. The Orioles have their 23rd win against 24 losses, 9 to the final.